and welcome everyone. My name is Chris Mothersoul, and with me today is Tim Fitzgerald, and together we are the duo CLX. We hope you enjoy your time attending Clarinet Fest 2021, and we're incredibly excited for this opportunity to share with y'all some of our knowledge and experience with using effects pedals, and to show you the impact that using them can have on clarinet performance. Whether you've used digital effects before or not, we hope that this presentation has something to offer for everyone. Now, by no means is this any sort of new concept. For example, Miles Davis used a wah pedal back in the late 60s to imitate the sound of a plunger mute, and soon after that, Bill Smith started integrating digital effects into a number of his compositions, pioneering the combination of clarinets with various effects. Recently though, and we're talking mainly in the last 20 years, we're seeing a resurgence in the use of these effects due to a combination, we believe, of the advancement of audio processing software and the boom of the guitar pedal industry. And for those asking the question, why does this even exist? Ask the same question to guitar players as to why the electric guitar was invented. To get more out of the instrument's sound. The clarinet is already a highly versatile instrument, but when you add the any number of effects readily available today, it opens up a virtually infinite number of sound possibilities for performers. Yeah, we've had a blast exploring the added possibility of pedals, but honestly, we were both intimidated about how to get this plane off the ground. Chris and I were planning a duo recital at our universities. He's at University of West Georgia, and I'm at University of North Georgia, and realized we both already had the pickups, but hadn't done much with them. I was honestly afraid to be the only clarinetist in the guitar section of my local music shops, so Chris and I decided to go together, which is the first thing that we'd recommend after you get your pickup. Not everything worked, but we had much more fun trying things together just hanging out as friends. We really enjoyed turning our clarinets into bass clarinets with an octaver pedal and distorting the clarinet sound into like an electric guitar sound, how it often does. After we bought those pedals, I got an amp uh, for keyboards off Facebook Marketplace for like a hundred bucks, and we agreed to try our hands at composition. But my sketches quickly fell by the wayside because Chris's imagination exploded out this absolutely sick duet we just played for you. Collaborating with a friend on new ideas is what got my old duo with John Goodman, Gremlins Duo, started. So I cannot emphasize enough the value of exploring your friendships creatively. Now, we're not going to cover every single detail of clarinet and guitar pedals today, but we hope to give you the essentials to get your plane off of the ground and skip some of the hours that we did scratching our heads at Guitar Center. And you can join us for even more information on Sunday evening using the link below. So let's start at the place where it all begins. The pickup. In order for these effects to be applied, the sound waves generated by the instrument have to be converted into a signal. On an electric guitar, this is accomplished by a series of magnets that interact with the vibration of the strings. On the clarinet, this can be done with what we call a piezo-style pickup that senses the changes in air pressure from inside the instrument. The sound can also be picked up using an external microphone, but personally we've experienced that there can be some potential drawbacks to this depending on the effects you're trying to use. In an ensemble setting, you might have to worry about other players' sounds bleeding into your signal, and even in a solo performance, you have to be careful about mic placement to ensure your sound is evenly picked up across all registers without any unwanted noise. The piezo-style pickups, with their more direct approach to sensing the sound, result in a clean, even signal across the board. Chris uses a piezo barrel model, and I use one made by the company Nalbontov. Now, this type of pickup has to be drilled into your clarinet barrel. My uh, repairman, he was pretty cool uh, and pretty confident when I asked him to do it for me. And he did a great job, but if you don't feel like having someone drill a hole into your favorite barrel, then some models like ours actually have an option of including a pre-drilled barrel. 
Now, looking down at the pedal board for a moment and following the cable from the pickup, you'll see that the signal is sent through all of our effects via a few smaller patch cables. Afterwards, the affected signal then has to be boosted, converted back into sound waves, and finally output through a speaker. This is accomplished by an amplifier. Now, this can be done mainly through an active PA speaker or a keyboard amp. You can certainly use a guitar amp, but do keep in mind that since it's specifically tailored to the frequency range of an electric guitar, many models may boost or roll off various frequencies to create distortion or add specific coloration to the sound, whereas keyboard amps and PA systems are designed to keep the sound clear and accurate across a wider band of frequencies. And now, the reason we're all here. Let's just dive into some effects. With the equipment we've gone over so far, you can pretty much use any pedal effect an electric guitarist can. So let's go through some of the main types of effects, starting with the ones you heard in our performance of Diptych. Let's begin with the volume pedal. This essentially acts the same way as the volume knob on an electric guitar. It allows you to fade in and out of your desired effects and fine tune the amount of signal coming from the pickup. With the heel down, you cut the sound off completely. Whereas with the pedal to the metal, you start to get the full signal strength. There are a few different types of volume pedals, so it'll be very important to try some out and decide how you want to use it before purchasing one. Tim and I, for example, both use passive volume pedals at the beginning of our signal chain, which are great because they're simple and they don't require a power supply. That being said, an active volume pedal, which contains an amplifier circuit and therefore requires external power, can be useful at the end of a longer pedal chain, since the circuit provides a buffer to preserve the signal strength. You also have high impedance and low impedance volume pedals, but for our setups we found that high impedance volume pedals generally work best. Pitch shifting pedals, also called harmonization pedals, Take your sound and shift the pitch, coming out of the amp, not your bell, obviously, up and or down a few steps. Sometimes harmonization pedals spell out chords for you. This Boss Super Octave OC3 pedal adds one and or two octaves below the sounding note. Now you have a bass clarinet. So before we go on, we just want to insert a quick word of caution. Almost all of these pedals will require external power of some sort, so ensure you're supplying the correct type of power. Looking back at the octave pedal for a moment, notice how on the back it lists a specific voltage required to power the pedal. If your supply does not match these specifications, you can seriously damage or even destroy your pedal. Trust me. I've learned this from experience. You can find more information on understanding how to properly power your pedals by using the resources link in the description below. So I don't know about y'all, but when I first heard that you could add effects to clarinet, my mind immediately went to rock. I was thinking about how close I could get to the gritty wailing sound of an electric guitar. And this next family of effects is what started this journey for me. So we'll group them together because they're pretty closely related. First is overdrive, which is an effect that is essentially meant to simulate the noise and grit players would get by pushing their tube amp too far with their guitar signal. It keeps a lot of your clean original sound, but just adds a bit of dirt. The next step would be distortion, which pushes the sound even further to make it much heavier and more aggressive. Now in Diptych, Tim uses a distortion pedal by MXR, the Prime Distortion. So, Tim, would you mind just giving us a bit of the distortion by itself? Sure. <laughs> So, 
Now, another step further in that direction is fuzz, which takes the distorted signal, clips it harder, and compresses it to the point where it creates this angrier sound that feels like your tone has been pushed way past its breaking point. So here today, I have a fuzz from Warm Audio, the Foxy Tone Box. So I'll play a little bit of that to show you all the noticeable difference between this and the distortion pedal. So at this time, let's take a step into the category of time-based effects, the most notable of them being delay. There are a few different types of delay, but the core concept is that the pedal takes your sound signal and plays it back multiple times to create an echo-like repetition. In clarinet literature, this is by far the most widely used effect, either as a textural effect or to create a second voice that you can interact with. Looking down at the pedal board, you'll notice there are a number of different parameters I can change, including the delay time, volume, and number of repetitions. So let's hear a bit of what this sounds like. <laughs> For a more in-depth demonstration of this effect, we're going to switch to a performance of Shauna Pebelo's Circle Play 2, which features a delay with a hold function, which essentially just takes the last part of the delayed sound and puts it on a loop. I'll go ahead and also add some reverb using this pedal from JHS. Also in the family of time-based effects, this does exactly what you think it would. It allows the player to add artificial reverb to their signal, which can come in handy for drier venues in particular. So we hope you enjoy this performance of Circle Play 2.
having gone over some of the possible pedal effects for clarinet, perhaps you're thinking you want something more compact, something with a smaller footprint, so to speak. In this case, a few different pedal companies, such as Boss, make multi-effects units that have a bunch of different effects built in, including ones we haven't even demonstrated today. These are great for players that want all of their options in one convenient package and they allow you to experiment and combine various effects as well as save presets for future use. Like Chris said, there are many more effects out there. We're still trying stuff out and learning about how to make it all work on the clarinet. So again, once you have your pickup and amp, just start trying stuff, bring a friend, and get your butts into your local music store. <laughs> Embrace your inner dork, ask all the questions that pop into your head, but don't be surprised if the guitarist's solutions don't work, and celebrate the many cool sounds that do come out of your clarinet. Absolutely. So, when we started putting this presentation together, we quickly realized that there was no way we'd be able to talk about all of the different effects in the gear involved. That's why we'd like to invite all of you to an extended Q&A session on YouTube on Sunday, July 11th at 7 p.m. Eastern, which you can attend by using the link in the description. We'll answer any of the questions you may have, and we'll talk about some of the other effects like looping and chorus. So we hope to see you all there. And don't forget to also check out the resources link below where you can find information on power supplies as well as a selected repertoire list for works using digital effects. Thanks for watching, everyone.